YouTube, it's Weird Paul. It's mail day again, and today's package comes from the Standrings. So let's take a look at what I got. Most of the stuff I got was given to me in these three suitcases. One suitcase at each of three shows that I performed in the first half of 2019. I got a whole bunch of holiday pins, a few other pins, and this Hello, My Name is Weird Paul pin. It looks just like me. I got this Subaru bracelet from the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, a Subaru Make Love Last microfiber cloth, some British beer coasters, a Lion King Pez dispenser, a 1996 Star Wars pog from the UK, and a mysterious key. Also got a mini notebook with some drawings and doodles in it, this Wham tote bag, a cloth lunch bag from First Commonwealth Bank, a bag from the Austrian supermarket chain Billa, a bag from a Russian store of the French Yushan chain, and this Eastern European bread bag. And I love the design on this Clark's Rewind tote bag. I think that Mr. Standring and I have a similar opinion of their music. And I got this very cool set of 1900 Celebrate the Century stamps that the U.S. Postal Service put out in 1998, commemorating things like the film The Great Train Robbery and the First World Series. You're out! I got this deck of cards that's not from a company that I can identify, and a sealed pack of coin trading cards from the year 2000, a reproduction of an old Hawaiian certificate of deposit, and $10 in Pennsylvania Association of Numismatists Coins for Kids Meeting auction dollars. I'm rich! Damn! I also got a 1960 Whitman 1856-1909 Indian Sense coin album, a smashed penny from the Meteor Crater in Arizona, a History Channel Club coin, and tokens from the Connecticut Turnpike, the State Amusement Company, United Skates, and this British 10 pence slot machine token from the Ace Cafe. That's rare. And I got these veteran stickers, you're on the ball stickers, and stickers from Crisp Entertainment in Indiana, PA, and 1234Go Records in Oakland, California. 1234! I got a few VHS tapes on Golden Pond. I used to watch this all the time on HBO in the early 80s. The Vidmark release, Freefall, starring Eric Roberts and Michael Jordan to the max. Wrapped in plastic. And I got some CDs. The black metal compilation, What Lies Beneath. And at the opposite pole, we've got the Acapella Cedar Springs Youth Gospel Group's Joy to the World. Plus Black Ridge's Good Time to Go. And a Star Wars Phantom Menace read-along disc. Also, after getting all of my unreleased 80s cassette albums through my Patreon page, Mr. Standring took the work of digitizing and remastering every one of them. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And I got a bunch of cassettes. I got Nirvana, Def Leppard, two cassettes by The Cars, Van Halen, two cassettes by ACDC, Autograph, three cassettes by Metallica, a two-tape set by the Smashing Pumpkins, the soundtrack to Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, and my favorite, Hazy Fantasy's Battle Hymns for Children Singing. <laughs> and I got a single by Rasan Patterson, and this Ford Motor Company presents Stereo for the 80s tape, with songs by Hall & Oates, The Eurythmics, and The Pointer Sisters. And I got one 8-track tape, The Knacks Get the Knack. I got the lyric sheet from the Black Sabbath album, Born Again, along with some records, the Hong Kong Swing 12-inch by the Northern Ireland band Cruella de Vil, music that sounds like a diabolical carnival. And the soundtrack to Hanna-Barbera's Charlotte's Web cartoon it has a pop-up barn in the middle. <laughs> wow, and Mickey Mouse Disco. I used to see commercials for this on TV in 1980 when I was nine years old. I used to tape them on my tape recorder because I really liked how Watch Out for Goofy sounded. So watch out, watch out for Goofy, watch out for Goofy. He's a disco demolition. And I got some 45 RPM record adapters. When asked if I wanted anything from the UK, I responded, how about some Toya Wilcox records? I'd never heard her music. Now, I have a whole collection. Starting off with her first single from 1979, Victims of the Riddle is a Peter Gabriel-esque jam with shrieking. 
1980's Bird in Flight is an upbeat rocker with the rhythm of a Devo song, and Ayea is driving and diabolical sounding. 1981's Four from Toya features her breakthrough hit It's a Mystery, which kind of sounds like a show tune to me, but for me, War Boys is the classic Toya track. And three more records from the same year, I Want to Be Free is a much more direct rock song. Thunder in the Mountains is a really cool picture disc, while Four More from Toya doesn't really have any standout tracks. But on this Stan Proud Flexi Disc, she's at her post-punk best. 1982's Brave New World is a funky little number. It's a bop, really. And Be Proud, Be Loud, Be Heard is my least favorite. Good message, though. 1983's Rebel Run is a powerful anthem, while 1985's Don't Fall in Love is the most traditional pop song yet. I could hear Kim Wilde doing this song. And I got one other Toya item. It's a program from her 2003 appearance in the musical Calamity Jane, and it's signed by Toya herself. <gasps> Let's see. I also received something that I've long desired uh, to possess. The August 2001 issue of Playboy magazine. Yep, that's the one with Belinda Carlisle of the Go-Go's in it. And John Bon Jovi back on top. Ooh, how kinky. I got the novelization of Apollo 13 and the book Me Stories of My Life by Katherine Hepburn. And check this out. From 1982, it's Pac-Mania, the official Pac-Man joke book. It's not actually jokes, though. It's drawings. Also got some old used postcards from the 70s and 80s, and some even earlier ones from the 1950s all the way back to the 1920s. This one, postmarked April 28, 1924, reads, Hello Heifer, how are you? How is you see these fine days? From Guess Who? Aww. This one is from December 28, 1914, over a hundred years ago. This large collection of postcards is now the keystone of my postcard collection, and some of them are really hilarious. Ooh, how kinky. I also got a pile of old black and white photographs, peachy keen. And I got this old cheerleading squad megaphone. Riff Ram Rass, kick em in the other knee. I also got a couple rocks that I should rehide somewhere soon so someone else can have a chance to find them. I got a plastic piggy bank, the kind you don't have to break to get your money back out of, a pencil from the Nicktown Fire Company, a piece of Five Little Pumpkins propaganda, and a collection of Japanese spoons featuring the Finnish Moomin characters. Here's a really cool Dairy Queen Dutch made glass. It's from the 1960s. And I got this mug. I don't wash dishes. Gee, but if I use it, I'll have to wash it. <laughs> And I got these. My favorite cereal, Frosted Krispies. I haven't eaten these since the 1990s. Snap, crackle, pop. Never even had these before, but Strawberry Krispies ended up being, oh, what a meal. And I got a whole case of Seagram's Escapes spiked. I can only drink about a half a can before I've shoved a videotape down my pants. And I got two, count them two, packs of Baudreaux's butt paste. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I don't know how I ever lived without this rose-scented moth cake deodorant. 100% naphthalene. Here's some really old receipts from 1965. They spent 45 cents on candy. And I got this fashionable bow tie. And I got a couple boxes of vintage Christmas stuff. Old ribbons, ancient gift tags used and unused, and Christmas seals. Some dating back to the 1940s. That is wild. And I got bags from stores that are long gone, like Kaufman's. This Happy Holidays bag from Montgomery Ward is beautiful. Check out these 80s bags from Hallmark. I even got a winter 1976 issue of Hallmark Expressions magazine. And to top it all off, a kid's drawing from Christmas Day, 1990. <laughs> and I got some communist German Christmas decorations. Some kind of freak, some kind of freak, some kind of freak. 
One of my biggest and youngest fans is one of the Standrings, and his name is Tex. And Tex made me this beautiful piece of original artwork that I'll keep until the day that a museum calls me and asks for it. Tex also gave me these colorful butterfly helium balloon weights, which was very thoughtful and generous of him. I also got this old plastic toy helicopter produced by Gay Toys Incorporated and this 2001 strawberry shortcake bobblehead. You can make pie. That's pretty good. And finally, I got some color form sets from the 70s and 80s. The Welcome Back Cotter set from 1976. We got Mr. Cotter and the Sweat Hogs. Who is this? That. That is Epstein. And from 1981, it's the Smurfland playset. It opens up into a little world where you can smurf to your Smurf's delight. <laughs> and I was surprised, nay, shocked, to find that under the Smurf's playset was yet another color form set, a peanut set. They sure gave you a lot of Snoopies. Thanks so much to the Standrings for finding and procuring all of this stuff for me. I appreciate it. If you enjoyed this Mail Day video, don't forget to click on the like button down below. I'll see you soon with more memories. Thanks, YouTube. So watch out, watch out for Goofy. Watch out for Goofy.